G'day, this is the great Australian detour and this time we're in the Victorian high country riding horses and driving a car that goes like a horse, like a lot of horses actually, one of your favourites, the WRX. You will see country that you can't even imagine. Hi-ho, Silver. <laughs> Stop! There's something special about a detour. Not the this road's blocked detour, but turning off the main road and finding something different. Your own brand of heaven might be just around the corner. A small town at the end of a long day, a chat with someone new, a pier to jump off, a river to fish. There are mountains to climb, roads to drive, sights you only imagined, food you surely couldn't have. And there are stories. Subaru's Great Australian Detour is a celebration of the long way, of seeing the drive as the destination and how much we can do as we travel from A to B. We do live in a beautiful country. Australia could be the greatest detour there is. Coming up, I take the 2022 Subaru WRX Sports Wagon all-wheel drive TS for a detour that matches the excitement of this iconic car. We're heading to the Great Alpine Road, or as I like to call it, the Road of Many Helmets. Horse helmets in Merry Jig, history helmets in Glen Rowan, speedily racing down Mount Buffalo Mountain helmets. There's a flying helmet. Imagine if there were a cheese helmet. Oh goodness, what fun. Alas, no. This is Victoria's Great Alpine Road in a Rex. Think of the Great Alpine Road as the driving tree change to the north of Melbourne. You could rush into it up the Hume, or you could detour your way through some beautiful country, home to some classic Australian stories. These are Victoria's best driving roads north of the Yarra. Whittlesea's on the outskirts of Melbourne and is officially the start of something great. I do like country footy and that notion of you drive your car in, you watch the game from the car where it's nice and warm. And this is Whittlesea. So they last won the flag in 2010, so you know. But Whittlesea is the last town before you get onto the first great road out of Melbourne, the first winding road, heading to Flowerdale and then on to Yay, which is our first stop. And it's a good chance to give the WRX a nice little kick. This stretch, the Whittlesea Yay Road, or C725, has Sunday Drive written all over it. You could take a break in Flowerdale, or power on through the twists and turns and romance, yes, romance, of the Victorian countryside. Oh, coming into Victoria's most romantic city, yay! The challenge you not to say yay like that, and it's not ye, it's yay! I'll tell you why it's romantic later. There it is. This is where the lovely Jacqueline and I were married 27 years ago. He goes, do you, David, take... J and I went, Andrew. And he goes, do you, <laughs> Andrew? It's good. Lovely church. Lovely town. It is a lovely town, growing by the minute, but holding firm to that warm country feel. That's a constant as you head north toward Kelly country. We had to stop at Bonnie Doon. We're going to Bonnie Doon. <laughs> How's the serenity? Uh, because, you know, famous from the castle. Uh, started life as a gold town, now it's a water town, so it's jet skiing and water skiing, and what I don't have is a ski boat. So we're gonna keep going to another place up the road. Gonna cut a merry jig. If 
If you've got a hankering for horse time, the McCormacks are a seventh generation farming family who've hosted weekend cow folk for years. Trail ride from 30 minutes to five days. So, Andrew. Bruce. You ready to go, mate? Yeah, I think so. It's beautiful country, it's I know that. It's really good, yeah. If we could go across a river. We've got one up there. Now give me a small horse. Small horse. Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, that good. Feel all right? Yeah, I actually feel like I should have worn longer socks. <laughs> I did say to Bruce that um, I wanted to cross the river. It's not because I wanted to cross the river, I wanted to look for trout in the river. Because I've fished this area before and it's just here. So, what's the river called? Buttercup Creek. Buttercup Creek. Bruce, you've done this your whole life. So what's, yeah. what's the joy in riding and taking people riding for you? I think it's that freedom you get. The freedom of just that and horse and there's just nothing else there, you know, and I enjoy that. Sometimes you're riding along and you forget who, how many your people you got or whatever, and you gotta turn around and count, oh, geez, have we got them all? Yeah. You know, that you just switch off, your mind goes in, a, in a no man's land. Yeah, so it's nice that you get in, you have the same do. moment that... Yeah, I do, and, and, and I'm assuming people get the same feeling. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> all right. So what, what what's your tip for the ride back? What have I... You still need a lot of work. <laughs> you need a lot of work. You, you, you're nowhere near... Um... I've got to stop scratching my toes. You do? Yeah. I don't know why you do that. I don't know why I do it. Melbourne Cup. I'll race you. How about that? Melbourne Cup. The only reason we're doing this whole thing is so I can wear my birthday hat. You know that. Yeah, I know. You know, a hat's not a hat till the dog's had pups in it. It looks a bit sort of newish. Yeah, it doesn't smell anything no, like that. No, that's not a hat till the dog's had pups in it. Mm. Okay, well, Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. After the break, we're going to Glen Rowan into Kelly Country. Be a lot. It's such is life and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to, you know, be in control of an animal, I know how to steer. Come on, seriously, Chorizo. Oh, it's Cheezel now, okay. You know we're headed for Kelly country. He was a great horseman as well. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Oh, poor Cheezel. Would it be wrong to want to listen to country music after all that horse riding? If I did, the WRX infotainment system is on the very side of excellent. Massive screens, 11.6 inches. And then in the dash, you've got the sports cluster, you've got all the different information. And should things go awry with your Apple CarPlay or Android and you lose connection with the internet, you've got something that I really love and that's pretty old fashioned. It's a CD player. I know, I've thought of everything. Two days in a fresh horse from Melbourne or a decent squeeze of the brake pedal short of three hours in the WRX, Glen Rowan is in the heart of Kelly country. Home to the infamous last stand, it's pivotal to the legend that is Ned Kelly. While the historic buildings are gone now, you can still put yourself in the scene for the siege at Glen Rowan. The inn, the station, it's all signposted and ready for your imagination to take hold. Adrian, the story of Ned Kelly is so vast. I don't know how to feel about him anymore. Is he, was he a lovable rogue or was he a rotten human? The Australian people have a, a double take on it. Like, they either love him or they hate him. He was, um, he was a fascinating person in a time when Australia was so young and raw. Yeah. To say whether you, you have a side, people do take their sides, but I think um, you've got to work it out for yourself. As a man, how hard was Ned Kelly? He was a very tough man, uh, over six feet in height, uh, went 20 rounds in a boxing match with Wild Ride at Beechworth uh, and won. He cut sleepers for a living. By hand? By hand. 
He walked into that battle at Glen Rowan carrying 45 kilos of armour, received 29 bullet wounds, five of them serious. Wow. So he was lucky to even survive that. He, he, he was near death, laying in the, the old railway station. Uh, massive loss of blood. They thought he would die, but uh, he pulled through. Adrian, do you have a favourite part to the Glen Rowan history? I think where Ned Kelly took his final stand against the police, where he, he uh, snuck out of the inn, come around from behind them and took on over 50 police, fully armed, wearing his armour, is probably the most significant part of the history and the, the saying, where as game as Ned Kelly come from. So he was alone on that final stand? He was on his own at uh, quarter to seven in the morning. Right. First light, taking on the police, surprising them from behind their lines. Uh, and thinking that, he could do it. Thinking he could take them on, whether he was creating a diversion uh, to get the other members out of the hotel or whether he was just uh, headstrong in taking on the police was an incredible stance. So the answer really, the other part is you've got to come here and see it and see where it happened. And You've got to walk the ground still and, can't figure it out. and stand on the site where it all happened and you can emerge how it all happened right here yeah, in right. Glen Rowan. Beautiful. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, mate. I've gone a long way off the road. I hope to find my way back. It's the greatest trading detour. It's, it's me. It was me. The whole. It's just me. Or, if you can't get your head around how it might feel to be Ned Kelly, you might dive a little deeper. The story of the Kelly Gang is one of the great Australian stories, but there's a bigger story in these parts that goes all the way back to the start of time. To hear that, or some of it, we're going to meet Uncle Dozer in Wangaratta. Dozer's part of the creative team behind the Bulawa Cultural Trail. Conveniently close to town and winding along the Ovens River, it's not just beautiful, but a reminder of the Bangarang story. These really are important stories for all of us. So tell us the, yeah. the, uh, the Toriong story. Well, the Toriong story was there was no water a long, long time ago. There was no water that ran through this part of the country, but people lived here. So they sang by Amy, send word to Rumbalara, you know, which is our rainbow serpent yeah. that lives in the mountains to come through our country and create a huge gully. He came through. So the um, serpent snake comes the through. Serpent, the Puts serpent it... snake came through and put a huge gouge through yeah, the right middle yeah. of our country. Oh, okay, so that's where the gullies came from. Yeah. yeah, yep. And then we had a huge empty gully, but we had no water. So ceremonies were performed again to Miami to send rain. We had rain had followed and filled up our gullies and created the rivers that you see today. It's fantastic. Yeah simple and easy and connects people to country. Yeah. Especially our Bangarang youth of today. Tosa, what do you love about the trail? Well, Andrew, the most I love about the trail is that it's a great opportunity to take in the Aboriginal culture mm. of the area. You know, a lot of people don't get that opportunity to embrace what belongs to all Australians today. And if you come to the Bulawa Trail, you know, you got that real chance of being able to embrace Aboriginal culture. Yeah. Yeah. And I must say it's a great little uh, community. It's a great town and it's just off the freeway. So it's, it's not a hard place to get to and we cater for everybody. Yeah. It is a great Australian detour. It is, that's for sure. Yeah, good. All right, well, thanks very much. <laughs> Loved it. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> I really like that Dozer talked about change. The King Valley's changed a lot as well. It used to be tobacco. It's now food and wine and cheese. Is it possible to love cheese too much? Milawa is basically the beginning of the gourmet region of the King Valley. Lots of different food and wine to try and, as you'd expect, artisans at work on cheese. Tell me about Millowa Cheese. Okay, so Millowa Cheese was established 32 years ago by David and Anne Brown. And they'd travelled quite extensively through Europe and found that 
there was a real market for it here in Australia because they couldn't see that kind of cheese here. So you mean a European? Yep. So, so what is a European cheese? So generally handmade. Yeah. Um, so we don't use any machines here. We are all by hand. So we make cow's milk and goat's milk here. We like to use no machinery and that way we're getting unique product all the time. What we need to think about when we're receiving our milk is what's happening in the area at the time. Uh, do we have seasonal change? That can really impact the milk. Each time you come to Miller Cheese and try cheese, it can taste different. Okay, so your camembert might be different in March to what it is in September. 100%, yeah. Great. Shall we? Shall, shall we? we try it? <laughs> yes, we shall. Okay. Kelly, could we rename this the road trip snack box? So I'd feel very comfortable with that yep. on the seat next to me. We can look at doing that for you, Dado. Great, thanks very much. Thank you, <laughs> loved having you here. Oh, it's been great. Ask yourself this, what would you do with a belly full of cheese? Apart from snooze, it's coming up. Cheese. So good, I can't work out which is my favourite. And I need to do something woof, robust afterwards. So abseiling. And we do that on the road to Bright. True driving joy reveals itself on the road to Mount Buffalo. I did say this was the road of many helmets. And now it's time to turn up the excitement on this detour because I'm going abseiling. I know we said big. I didn't mean this big, like as in the tallest abseiling launch point in the country. Still, got to work off that cheese. What's the feeling of abseiling? What's what's the, at the core of it? It's getting out there. It's putting yourself beyond your usual comfort zone. It's doing something different. Getting a challenge. Testing your mental space a bit too. Yeah. It feels like a whole series of faith. You know, I have faith in the rock, I have faith in you as the safety person, and it all has to work together. Yeah, yeah, from my side, I, I know it all works. I know how strong the ropes are in the caravan. I know it's all good. All right, well, shall we test the faith? Let's go see. Okay, right. So he's good for me to go. Great, that's one of us. <laughs> How far? Oh How far is it? About 45 metres down on this one. OK. You've got me. I've got you. Yes. Jesus! Oi, oi, oi! Far out! Great! Yeah, all good. Do you want me to undo your... OK. Wow. That was cool. Thanks. You're done, mate. Really good. Really, really good. I wasn't scared at all. I was acting. It was just like my bad horse riding acting. Just pretending. The job's done. Onwards and upwards. And we're definitely climbing. This time in the Subaru WRX sports wagon. How best to describe this car, the WRX Sports Wagon? Well, it's exactly nothing like the 1984 Sports Wagon I drove across Australia with my mate Visa. That was in the late 80s. It's not meant to be. It's, look, it's definitely a nod to history and the generations that have come before of brilliant WRXs. May be described as a fusion of sublime sedan performance and Sports Wagon flexibility offered exclusively with a Subaru Performance Transmission. But what does that mean in English, Andrew? It's more fun, more engaging. Look, there's an upgraded, more aggressive shift logic with a quicker and smarter response to what the driver's doing. Approximately 30% faster upshifts and 50% faster downshifts compared to the last model. As in, and I promise this, as much fun as you can imagine. 
Oh, I've really been looking forward to this part of the Great Alpine Road. Honestly, so I can use the paddles and really engage the Subaru performance transmission. So just, you know, just feel like I'm something I never get to be during the week. Well, as the saying goes, you don't know what you don't know. And I feel a bit silly for not knowing about this. It's just stunning. Mount Blowhard there, Mount Higginbotham, Hotham, and this road. I didn't think we'd find anything that would match Tasmania and that west coast, but this is amazing. This on this, it's just, it's driving. In this festival of adventure, I needed one last chance to wear a helmet. So I'm going paragliding with Fred up above Bright to see the great Alpine Way from another perspective. How far off road can we get? This is the great Australian detour. Oh, it's gorgeous. Why don't you just leave me here? Because I'm almost certain I'll see where to next on Subaru's Great Australian Detour before we touch down. <laughs>